our third and final guest, he is a brilliant storyteller and comedian. He was a finalist in Australia's competition for best new stand-up. He's a super, super funny guy and he's even performed alongside Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish. Wow. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and most recently he did his own show called Charlie at the Griffin Theatre where he talks about his um, experience um, as a refugee and what his life looks like now. I'm really excited for you to meet him. He's a super interesting and hilarious guy. Please welcome Oliver Twist. For being here. Thank you for having me, Daryl. Of course, and I'm so glad you made it because during the show, yeah. you actually arrived from Melbourne. Yes. So I was, tell us I was about this. There's a I, bit of logistics behind the scenes that I think is important for you to know. I was I was in Melbourne. I flew into Melbourne this morning, and then I flew back here. I I was <laughs> uh, I flew into Melbourne from Queensland, where I was helping my mom move house uh I f yeah i went on mother's day because i'm the best son in the world um, <laughs> and we got there she lives in southeast of queensland in a place called ipswich which is notoriously very uh racist and uh, it's, it's kind of like a retirement area right like a lot of people buy houses no one rents so mom can't really afford to buy a house at the moment, so she kind of had to move really quickly. Anyway, that's the story. And then from then, I went to Melbourne for something really quickly. And then I came here quickly as well as well, I could. I'm just so glad you could make it. That's great. Yes, Thank he you. made it. Give him a round of applause. He's Thank here. You. Thank you. He made it. I made it. I made it. <laughs> I, I like your name because it is it is my sister's name and my mother's name as well really yeah so my mom is josephine and we call we call her joe for short and my sister is joseline and we call her joe for short yes yeah more joes yes and your first name is in my last name oh uh, yeah so how's that for like nameception <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your name i love your name yeah, do we want to tell the audience my name? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you already know. Okay, you can just say it's it's Oliver. Everyone calls me Oli. Uh, Oliver Twist. That's that's my name. It is uh, it is my real name, and um, as real as it can be, you know. <laughs> Considering the, because you know what will come to mind is Charles Dickens and. Uh, <laughs> And it's everyone in my family has a different family name. It's very traditional of where I'm from in Rwanda, um, which makes it very, very difficult for someone who is uh, fleeing town. As a refugee, you know, uh, one of the consequences is you can get displaced. So if you get to the office site <laughs> and like, oh no, we got a system here, just tell me. Just tell me your name. I was like, oh, Oliver Twist. And I was like, that's, that's your name? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, what's your dad's name? Harry Potter. Well, good fucking life. <laughs> You're never going to find. You need a, like a one name so you can track everyone. It's very important. But um, I, I, I love that tradition in my family. You know, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing and I, I hold it dearly. I did change it when I was 18, just the last name. So I was, I've always been Oliver. Yeah. And yeah, everyone in my family gets to do that if they want to. Oh, I see. So tell me more about the tradition. So, you so get everyone, like all my siblings, I have three sisters. They have different last names. Different okay, first names, different last yeah. names. It's like we're not related. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Except for the skin tone, it's like we're not related at all. Um, but um, yeah, that's that. Yeah, I see. So you're a comedian. You start off in, in comedy. I try. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be discovered. Um, well, you're doing yes. amazing. So how did you get into comedy? 
I got into comedy after a frustration um, of uh, going to TAFE in Ipswich and you know, the formidable underappreciated institution. And um, <laughs> I was going there and I was like, ah, I kind of want to do something better. And I, I just kind of quit that and I started doing comedy in 2015. Cool, what were you doing at TAFE before you made the change to comedy? I was uh, proving to white people that I've been to high school before. Really, that's all I was doing. Because I went and did an adult tertiary course, mm. which is kind of, I, I came here when I was 18, I graduated uh, high school back in Malawi, but they were like, prove it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I guess we'll do that. So I just did pretty yeah. much what everyone would do in year 12, last yep. year of high school. I see. Um, and I was like, okay, that's that. And then I just started performing in like, like bars and pubs in Ipswich, yeah. and then would go to Brisbane to do that as well, and then we'd go to Gold Coast to do that as well. So it was like pretty far commute. Yeah, um, that's 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 a far commute for a gig, isn't it? But it is. It's it is. it's paid off really well. You were a Raw finalist. I was. So I was. for anyone who doesn't know, Raw is an annual competition to find Australia's like coolest and funniest uh, new stand-up every don't, year. Don't try and enter it. They have found him. Um, <laughs> it's, everyone has tried after me. They've never made it. Um, it. I mean, just cancel it at this point. I mean, it's not even <laughs> a competition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you've performed alongside Kevin Hart, Tiffany Haddish. I did. Yeah. Tell us I about knew, that. I knew Tiffany Haddish was there. So there were... They were promoting the um, the animation film, uh, the rabbit film. What is the rabbit film? Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. That's the one. Um, and I knew they were going to come to the comedy store. They were like, anyway, would you like to be one of the people that opens one? I was like, absolutely. And um, Kevin Hart came in with people that were giants like i was like oh that's the shortest man i've ever seen and he had one of those gold like watches that you're like oh that costs more than i make and will make in the next five years and um he came in and he was like oh my friend i was with alex my friend and he was freaking out he's like that is that's that's him and i was like yeah that is him and i was like oh you're about to go on he's like i'm about yeah. to go on and then i went on it was awesome and we tried to meet him afterwards but the giants were like no they're like you're no. not getting anywhere near that fifty thousand dollar watch um, <laughs> absolutely not um and tiffany was amazing and it was at the comedy store in entertainment quarter at moore park and um it was absolutely one of my highlights in doing comedy it was yeah, very cool that's, yeah that's that's uh, that's amazing and to go from you know having that experience i know you've come from queensland um you know that's so cool how you've built up um, your career to get to a point like that that's incredible it is it's been it's been really really good um so when i moved to sydney from queensland there were definitely like more opportunities here i think if i stayed there yeah. i wouldn't have been able to get access and be exposed to like the kind of opportunities that have made um my career so far possible yeah that's right yeah so most recently you've done the show Jali at the wonderful griffin yes. theater yes yes i did um, I, I know you you speak about your life and your life experience can you tell us about the inspiration of of that show and also how you you know how it went the show itself um the show went great like very surreal um people from all all sorts of backgrounds were really gravitating, responding to it very strongly, which made me very mm. feel really, really good about it because I was working for it for for a while. And the way it came about is, I was there was just a frustration of not seeing that kind of narrative mm. on Australian stage, and it almost makes you think those kind of people don't exist. But I I know those people. Mm. You know, I am one of those people. And I came to Australia in 2014, but before that, there has been many, many, many people that have been here um, and that have gone through the journey of being a refugee or an asylum seeker trying to get to Australia. And I just got sick of watching the likes of like Tom Ballard get on like ABC and be like, oh no, I'll speak for all refugees. I was like, no, I can speak to, um, <laughs> you know, I think I can put some words together. <laughs> and 
and and <laughs> and it was just a matter of kind of pushing the boundaries of that, not just for like representation yeah. sake, but also for just a, a genuine joyous work of art, That's or right. you try to anyway, because I don't just like diversity for the sake of diversity. You know, I, I did a Griffin Theatre because I wanted to have that prestigious mm. that Griffin does come with. It's like, oh, cool, this is a show. So it has to be comparable to everything else Griffin puts out. Um, and and that's good and i was very very happy with the way it was received which was great yeah that's that's fantastic we've got some photos actually of um of you in the show so oh, yeah that's so this is this is your photo for promoting the show is that right that is correct i i flew to australia i don't know what that's about i <laughs> I don't know how to put or, or do anything like that. You know, it was it was interesting because we were retaking the photos and they were like, so what do you have in mind? I was going for a very like Ai Weiwei inspiration mm. for his refugee exhibition that he did a couple of years ago. Anyone here familiar with Ai Weiwei? Yes. Okay, cool. The kids are like, it's, he's cool. All right, <laughs> just get up amongst it and <laughs> And then we ended up using kind of like, okay, cool, we want to make that and make an Australian kind of spray on it. So we throw some sand on it as well. Um, but yeah, don't, that is misleading. People are like, well, where's the pedal? There's no story about it in Jali whatsoever. But yeah, that was Griffin. That's, yeah, that's right. And so, I mean, this is just a flashback to this is when you're doing stand-up, right? Yes, yeah. this is this is at the comedy store. This is where I performed. Um, that's awesome. Uh, that's the same stage where Kevin Hart was on and Tiffany Haddish. That was my first show back from uh, COVID, I believe. After oh, they, cool. Yeah. They reopened um, at the comedy store. Yeah. It's a very cool institution. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and so back to, to Jali, what do you explore in that show? What, what story do you tell? What's it about? I tell the story of my family fleeing the 1994 Rwandan genocide and sort of the aftermath of that and what that does to a person. And um, there's, a, there's a lot of... Um, you know, perspective in it and a lot of feelings about how disorienting a refugee experience can be, you know. So we, we left Rwanda in 2000 and I was four years old and my sister was two, Angel. And we arrived in Zaleka refugee camp in Malawi and lived as refugees for 14 years, you know, which is a long time. And like halfway through it, I want to say for most people, and this is a generalization, is like you lose that kind of hope that anything will come out of pushing forward, trying to get resettled to a third country if you can go back home, which was the case for us when it's not safe. Um, so you do what's called resettlement. You apply to different countries and try and see which one can accommodate you. And luckily enough, we got to come to Australia in 2014. And in between that 2014 and 1994, so much has happened to me and my family. And I wanted to explore that in a way that brings light out of a very tumultuous experience. That's right. And yeah. so this show was a mixture of your comedy and your storytelling. It is. It is a mixture of kind of like, it's, it's not so much so a mixture of comedy as, as if comedy is a separation from the story. Mm. It's, 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 um, it's an addition to yeah. kind of finding the humor within the story. So the stories stay the same. I don't add anything extra to it. But you try and find uh, the breathing moments within him. Um, and that's pretty much the attempt going into it. And it was an hour of a show. It was very kind of hard to do it. But having my previous experience as a stand-up comedian coming from it, I was like, oh, cool, maybe here we can make them laugh. Maybe here yeah. we can make them laugh and then go on with the rest of the story. And how many shows did you do in total? I did 15 shows one day off. And wow. I did two shows on Saturday. I mean, clap, people, clap. <laughs> it, was, it was very exhausting. At the end of it, I lost, 
I lost my voice. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and, and I mean, I'm not surprised, right? After that, yeah, that much, yeah. Started it sounding like Bart Simpson. Um, it was <laughs> pretty bad, um, but it was also good. But I haven't done that many shows in my life. But it was also kind of like um, the element of acting in a show that's an hour with like shifting gears and all like that. Um, was a, an amazing experience, a learning experience, but um, definitely was like, okay, this is work. Yeah, well, congratulations on the success of that show and Thank will you be you. doing it again soon? I will, I will. Yeah, we're plotting some tour dates uh, to do it um, in, in Queensland. Oh, and Queensland, give yeah, them, back give in them, the yeah. Give them a taste of it because most yeah. of it is situated there mm. um, and because that's where we were first settled. So two things. First of all, keep an eye out. You should definitely check out that show. I mean, if you have to go to Queensland, you should go to Queensland to see that show. Um, Don't stay there, but <laughs> you should go. So let's talk about Queensland. Yes. How, how was it for you? Uh, you, know, you know, how... I'm curious to know, so you moved to Australia, you know, did you have any idea of what you thought Australia might be and then how did you find Australia? I thought I was going to Brisbane and then I went to Ipswich and, <laughs> and I got attacked by a racist magpie and <laughs> it was racist, the magpie, and it kept attacking me for like three months. Three months? Yeah, and I slapped it and <laughs> nobody told me that's illegal, so... <laughs> I kept doing it and somebody told me, you know you can go to jail for like up to two years for slapping a magpie. And I was like, well, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> it also kind of seems like a petty crime, you know what I mean? You, I'm drinking Coca-Cola, so for the kids. Back in the day, Coca-Cola used to have a cocaine in it. Very bad, very bad, bad. And they caught those guys and they were like, hey, uh, don't do it again, but keep going. Meanwhile, 2014, I'm trying to protect myself from a hate crime. <laughs> okay, getting I punished. I was like, no way. It's not absolutely <laughs> happening. So I, I keep up with it. I, I still do it. Catch me at Central Park. It's a whole show. <laughs> it's my next show. <laughs> So I, I believe you have shared with us a picture oh, from right. Queensland. <laughs> now you, that I think about it, it has no context with Queensland. But yes, let's do it. You've shared this story. You've shared this photo, I should say, with us. I don't know the story behind this. So we are learning together. This is the most wanted man in Queensland. Um, <laughs> no, this is my friend Eric. And we were preparing to reshoot a very specific scene from Crocodile Dandy. <laughs> you guys have seen that movie? Okay, and the, the only reason I agreed to do it because I was playing the person who gets to hold the knife. Um, I was like, oh, do you have the jacket? We were looking for that jacket. And um, I agreed to do it because I'm very obsessed with animals. And as you've heard my story about magpie already, um, but specifically Australian animals because they 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 seem to be aggressive, but more than that, like incredibly powerful. <laughs> like you don't like how many of you have heard about the great emu war? Anyone? Okay, Australians, I'm about to give you an Australian history because. <laughs> I'm a good citizen and I do my research. So back in the 1930, 1930s, in Western Australia, right, there was a, a war. There was a war between emus because they kept going into these farmers like, and then like destroying all their crops. So the Australian army was like, oh hell no. <laughs> we, we're we gonna run you up and we're gonna pack you up and send you back to your home, which is Australia. And they were like, the emus were like, no, that's not happening. So there's like photos of this and <laughs> they like literally just so many of them f like are fighting with the army. And get this, <laughs> the emus won. <laughs> they won that war. How incredible is that? 
It's maddening. <laughs> the yeah. ABC did a piece story on this. You can look it up, but it's 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 insane. And <laughs> they won the war. And I was like, how many Australian animals like have won <laughs> battles? So turn this out. Check this out. Western Australia, again, this is in 2013, right? Many, many years later, there's a group of people, right, friends, they go into a campsite and, you know, they're just having a good time, you know, relaxing over the weekend. They bring a couple of beers, right? And they go back into their tents to sleep. Midnight, a pig <laughs> wanders into their campsite, stole the 18 pack you know, of beer, <laughs> drank all of them, <laughs> not one, this is very real, the pig stole 18 bottles of beer, drank all of them, <laughs> and fought a cow. <laughs> <laughs> and get this, it won, it won, oh. it won that fight. Wow. It's unbelievable. That's this absolutely incredible. Real. You're right. I don't know how Australian animals After have done After I read that, I was like, oh, yes, I'm ready to be a citizen of this <laughs> country. <laughs> wow, what a story. <laughs> so, I mean, you definitely check out Oli's show, but then also apparently check out the ABC special on the yeah. Emu, Emu War. The Emu Wars. Um, Is that yeah. a plural? Though, yes, yeah, wars the, as many. I think yeah. it was war, but it went on for months. <laughs> Man. Wow. Very, yeah, the resilience. Well, I'm very scared of emus. I can, and that I was can, before uh, I knew about this war. I know. So now I'm very scared. Yeah, don't fuck with emus. No, people. I won't. Don't I don't won't. No. Yeah, I, I, I will lose. <laughs> it, there is evidence now. Yeah. I had a feeling before. Now it's <laughs> confirmed. Absolutely. Yeah. So Queensland. Yes. Queensland. It's due to, so that photo that you showed us, mm -hmm. you know, the, like that's, you know, you're talking about, you know, the different characters that you meet in Queensland and all yeah. the different people that you know from Queensland. You know, how was that experience for you moving there and getting to know Australia through being in Ipswich? You know, there's, there's, a, there's a certain, um, anyone who knows me, there's a certain sense of paradox that comes with um, the way I tend to see things. So I got to Ipswich and I was like, man, I, I don't find these people, like we don't gel. And at the same time, Ipswich is where Sonita Pauline Hansen started her career, you know what I mean? And she's very successful and I, I'm very ambitious. And I used to go around watching, like looking around all these billboards of Sonita Pauline Hansen. And I was like, oh man, in my, you know, in my quietest dreams, I imagine, you know, she's my role model, you know what I mean? <laughs> I imagine having red hair and being mean to Asians. And I was like, how do I reach that? She was like on every people. And they love her there. But then at the same time, it's like, I, ha I had to distance myself mm. from the Pauline when she went into the parliament and tried to pass a motion that it's okay to be white. And I, I was like, <laughs> when has it never been okay? It's <laughs> Historically, I think it's always been more than okay, actually, if you look around. And my family still live there. I don't know why, but it's, I think, <laughs> you know what, it, it, it is like um, ha having come from like such a traumatic and unstable mm. uh, life before of living as a refugee, you just want some yeah. comfortability and consistency. Yeah. And for them, I understand why they're still there. Um, but for me, I was, I was kind of like, you know what, I, I think I want to explore more yeah. and kind of, you know, move to a different city and all that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind going back there, but it's, you know, I, I arrived there on Sunday and um, like Sunday morning and by Sunday, midday the novelty had run off i was <laughs> ready to pack and come back and so i i only go in short periods of of kind of time yeah i see i see so ollie i mean you've achieved so much with comedy and storytelling so far what's next for you 
what is next? I'm um I'm working <laughs> I'm working on a TV show. Nice. Um, and yes, yes. Um well <laughs> If you know anything about the industry, these things are very flimsy. Um, but it's exciting. I'm trying to get some black people on the ABC and um, literally and metaphorically. And it's, it's a show that's going to be like all black people on TV. Hopefully they let us do it. <laughs> yes, I really it's, hope. It's one of those yeah. things where, you know, me and my friend talk a lot about representation and it's important. It's mm. very, very important, but it also has to be an awareness of like, it's a long time coming. This yeah. is not breaking ground. This is not radical to kind of have these kind of conversations. So the idea is to go in there and make it good while you're still kind of opening doors for other people. You know, mm. it's, you know, it's the, it's the medicine within the candy. So you want to go in and be like, cool, this is the show, but also this is the kind of people yeah. I want to work on this show. Um, so yeah, I'm currently working on a, on a, a TV show that I'm potentially going to pitch to the ABC. Hopefully they like it. And I think people are going to really, really like it. It's a cool new idea that I haven't really seen um, on Australian programming. So in just like Jolly, that it, it was new and people loved it because maybe because of the novelty of it, but you you hope that past that they can yeah. see these characters as people that they don't really care to interact with, but they live with them in everyday life around Australia. Ollie, I can't wait to see your show, your yeah. TV show. That's that's super exciting. Good luck. Thank you. And everyone, please, you know, definitely check out Jali, the Emu War documentary, yes. and also Ollie's TV show when when it does come to the ABC. Yeah. Uh, yes. Everyone, please thank Ollie for his time. Thank you, thank Ollie, you. for being here. Thank you.